the Weather Channel? Yeah. It said the storm was over Indian Head at 650. With heavy winds at 55 miles an hour, uh -huh. heavy rain and lightning. Yes, um, I'm, head, I'm in La Plata, and there is a, going north, and there is a tornado on the ground. 911. Sir, it, I don't know if you know, there's a tornado just came through Port Tobacco. Okay, Port Tobacco, yeah, off of Valley Road. It just came through by Route 6 and Valley Road. Okay, we'll have some... All right. It'll be going up by Morgan's Ridge. I, I knew it had to hit some homes. Okay. Bye-bye. Okay, all right. It was a Sunday evening, and at that time I was the chief of 911 in Charles County. And the uh, my boss, the the director, the emergency manager, was out of town, so I was in the hot seat. Right, so I'm at home Sunday evening, just chilling, getting ready to go to work the next day, and uh, phone rings, and it was Commissioner Murray Levy, right. Commissioner Levy asked me if I was aware of the fact that they had issued a, a tornado watch for Charles County. And I assured him I did and everything was okay. It's just a watch. Don't get excited. <laughs> it's just a watch. We'll be okay. If something happens, I'll let you know. And about probably a half an hour or so later, I get a, a page from the 911 center that says, call us immediately. So, and when my pager goes off, now I can hear what the fire department's doing, right? And I hear this, a lot of chatter in the background. It's really, really busy. And I don't know why. So I call the 911 center, the shift supervisor answers the phone and he says, hello. I said, hello, this is Tony. He said, I'm busy, click. And so now I'm wondering, okay, what's going on? I hear all this chatter called the center after they asked me to call and they hung up on me, what's going on? So I'm on my way to La Plata. I go out, jump in my buggy, I'm on the way to La Plata. And uh, I don't have the slightest idea what's going on, but when I get in my car, of course it has fire department, police department radios in it. And I'm, I'm hearing more and more bits and pieces about what's going on. Um, there's a call for a collapsed building in town of La Plata and they got units responding to that. And and so I'm trying to put the pieces together to figure out what's going on. Because at this point, I had no idea that a tornado had come through. Okay, number one. Yes, uh, my whole, the whole top of my house is getting ripped off. Okay, okay slow down, slow down. But no one's hurt at your house? No. Okay, that's fine. It's it's your, uh, every house in the block is down. I understand that. We'll get them there as soon as we can, sir. Okay. Okay? All right. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. This is Ambulance 109. We're stuck at the hospital. They have a tornado in the parking lot. Uh, just stay there. We are. Okay, it's a safe area, okay? I uh, drove into work. Um, I was listening to uh, W3TOP, and uh, they had a, a warning out for severe thunderstorms in, um, in PG County. So when I got to the hospital and I got out of my van, I looked up and said, Ooh, I do not like the looks of the sky. I said, well, maybe I'll get to report some uh, hail or something today. So I grabbed my ham radio out of the bag, my work bag, which I usually kept it in there uh, to have it handy if I needed it. I grabbed it out and it, when I got into the ICU, uh, Regina uh, pulled me into one of the rooms and said, is that a tornado? And I looked at it and I said, yes. And I said, um, let me call this in. And I um, said, we need to move the patients into the center of the circle. So we started moving the patients. And I got on the radio and the Charles County Amateur Radio Club, which I was a member of, had started a sky warn, which is what we do when there's a weather emergency and they were starting to have reports of some hail and stuff. And I broke in and I said, there's a tornado spotted uh, about a half mile uh, west of the hospital. Charles K-901. Yeah, how you doing? Okay. I got a house down here in Hillendale just got knocked down. A whole house, I don't know if people are in it or not. What's the address on it? DC-901. Uh, we need, uh, we had a tornado come through Morgan's Bridge off the Clearwood, there's houses missing. We, at the time of the tornado, 
lived on Morgan's Ridge Road here in La Plata, Maryland. Uh, but we weren't home that evening. We were in church at Marbury Baptist Church, and we received word that there had been damage in La Plata. As a matter of fact, we, the word we received in La Plata had been destroyed. Well, we were a little suspect of the news, thinking maybe it was a little over dramatic. Uh, but we then headed home uh, to our house in La Plata. Uh, the policemen were doing a great job. They blocked off the streets into Quailwood, uh, where we couldn't get in and we had to park out at the church at the end of the road there and walk in. Uh, the first mile, uh, we saw no damage at all and we thought, okay, this is a little strange. Uh, but then we started seeing lumber in the, in the woods and we thought, well, that's a bad sign. And when we got up to our street, which was uh, Mortgage Ridge Road, but it began West Quail, a policeman stopped us and said no one could enter on the street. And we saw the very first house. It was actually, I was taller than the house at the, at the time we were walking up to it. And we explained that we lived on that street. They immediately knew who we were because our neighbors had been looking for us. And so uh, we started walking down the street and it was an amazing sight. Uh, we saw houses that were completely destroyed, uh, houses that were split uh, much like a dollhouse, uh, where you look into the rooms of a dollhouse but no face on it, uh, and people sitting out in the yard, uh, still a little bit bewildered. Uh, when we got to our house, our house was damaged but not destroyed. We were busy working with getting the um, patients moved into the circle, all the curtains closed in the windows to prevent any of the flying glass from the windows. And then uh, there were three ventilator patients, so we couldn't get them all the way into the circle because uh, the, the tubes were not long enough. Uh, the cords and the tubes were not long enough, so um, we covered them with blankets. And we had one one lady who was visiting who was um, getting pretty uh, panicky, and uh, one of my coworkers, Joanne, she kind of calmed her down. And then Joanne and, and uh, the, the visitor uh, kind of laid across that patient that was in the, in the center of the door. The rest of us kind of um, hunkered down in the middle of the circle. And um, I called a mayday on the, on the uh, radio uh, and said the, the tornado was hitting the hospital. And I, I just thought, to myself, this is what it's going to be like to die, and we we um, kind of said our prayers in the middle of the circle. And about uh, a couple of minutes later, uh, Mike Tackish came across and asked me for damage reports, and I went, "Oh my God, we're not hearing the noise anymore, and we've lived through this." So then I was telling him. Uh, that I couldn't see a whole lot, but that the dash in was gone. That was right there beside the hospital, and uh, the house behind it was damaged, and we could see that there was some damage at the port tobaccos across the street. Stand by. Communications. Um, hi, we just uh, went through a tornado, and we're sitting behind a, a building, and there's practically nothing left here. Where is this, ma'am? got to uh, 488 and Route 6, the police department had the intersection shut down. 
So they flagged me through. I went up and I made a right. I'm coming into town, and as I come into town, I'm stunned. I'm stunned because I don't even recognize the town. I don't know what has happened. I still don't know that the tornado's gone through. I can hear all the activity on the radio, but I am completely confused. And I look off to my left and I see this group of people, probably six or eight people, and they're walking across lawns and, and parking lots and they're headed toward the hospital. And they're obviously, a couple of them are injured. And, and I'm wondering, what's going on? It's just not sinking in, right? And as I get right to the top of the hill and I'm looking across the way on the other side of, of 301, west of 301, I'm, and it's April 28th, and there are no leaves on the trees. They're completely barren. There's nothing on them. So I get down to the 911 center and check on them, make sure everything's okay. And I, that's when I find out that a tornado has come through and I start figuring out what all the damage has been done and how, how widespread it is and whether or not anybody's hurt and that sort of thing, what kind of resources we have. But because my boss is out of town, it is my job to come here to the government building and, and open an EOC here. Charles County Fire. Send me whatever you can send manpower-wise. Uh, La Plata has been hit. We have buildings collapsed and people trapped. Oh, I got okay. you yeah. La Plata Station 1. Okay. okay. Anything, anything and everything? Right? Anything you can get me. Just let me know later on what you got. All right. Thanks, buddy. Bye. It is amazing how discriminating a tornado is uh, because on one side of the street you could see uh, multiple habit houses damaged or destroyed. On the other side of the street, the trees were still intact and the houses were fine. Uh, the neighbors were still shaken uh, because they had just experienced a tornado. I was surprised by the fact I, I, I didn't recognize the town. I, I'd been driving from Charles Street to the 911 center for 20 years and I didn't recognize it. It was completely different. It, it, buildings were ripped up. Buildings were knocked down. They were just gone. Right, the water tower was gone. It, it was, it was just. It looked like it really and truly looked like a war zone. It looked like something had come through and just ripped, just arbitrarily ripped things up. It, it was, it was incredible. It was amazing. It was terrible. I just couldn't believe it. I mean, just the, um, I drove my friend home out to Newberry and just all the trees that were down and, you know, partially in the road and down on the side of the road and all the houses and damage that was done, it, it was just unbelievable. I just couldn't believe it. You know, I, I, there are two times, I've been doing this for 43 years two times, there's two times in my career where I didn't know what to do first. I was completely befuddled and didn't know what to do first, and that tornado was one of them. I've never, ever felt that helpless. I, I just, I didn't know what to do first, right? The problem was so big, and it was Sunday evening, and I didn't have any help. I was, it was overwhelming and, and I didn't know what to do first. And, and that's the biggest thing for me. That's what I remember most about that tornado is, is being overwhelmed and feeling unprepared, right? That will never happen again. <laughs> that will never happen again, but it happened that day. I was amazed at how people came together to deal with that. And uh, even like in the hospital, one of the patients who was a minister and you know, as we were all gathered there in the circle, he led us all in prayer and you know, everybody was, you know, all in one spirit there of, you know, and uh, then the, the people that came to help. I mean, uh, nurses that no longer worked there, they were coming in asking if we needed any help. Um, you know, my, my 
my son, you know, coming in and, and helping out. And there were lots of other people that came in, and, you know, the, the ham radio guys, they came over and helped, you know, shadow the supervisor, helped us get supplies we needed. And it, it was amazing to see all the different people come together and, and help out. The people of La Plata were amazing in how they came together uh, in unity and worked with one another, came to each other's aid. Uh, it was it was an awesome experience. I would have to uh, shout out to the police officers and the fire department. The fire department stopped by our house three times during the night to make sure we were okay. The people came together. The Amish community was absolutely awesome. Uh, they were on the streets the next day, walking in with tools to help people get the trees cleared, uh, helping people to recover. Uh, the local restaurants uh, were delivering food uh, to people who had lost their homes. People really came together at that time and, and a real shout out for the character of the people of La Plata uh, and Charles County in general. Uh, people from St. Mary's County and Calvert County came over and helped also. Uh, it was very amazing. Fate shined on us that day. We were given a present, right? We were given a present that day. It destroyed Archbishop Neal School. Right? If that had been 10 o'clock on a Monday morning, I can't even describe how bad that would have been. It, it would have been, it's just terrible. I'm a member of the Rotary Club, uh, the Rotary Club of Charles County, La Plata, Maryland. And we uh, also have a foundation within our club, and I was a member of the foundation at the time. Uh, our club, uh, mentioned that the star was down. The star was an icon, iconic view in the town of La Plata and everybody recognized the star. We wanted to get the star back up for psychological reasons within the town and that was one of our goals. Ms. Bobby Baldus, who was a tremendous member of this community and I believe a member of the Garden Club at that time, suggested to us a, a grander plan. Uh, why don't we do a memorial garden there where the star is? But the Memorial Garden uh, mentioned some of the folks who were taken in the tornado. Uh, I, 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 you don't want to minimize life uh, at all. Uh, we were fortunate that only a few people were taken, but a few people were taken, and that was important to remember. So uh, the Memorial Garden does that. Uh, if you want to see the Memorial Garden, it is over behind the old firehouse. Uh, there's a star sticking up above it. Uh, that you can see and right at the base of it is a nice stone base tile memorial garden with benches memorializing the folks that were taken in the in the tornado you know i i um in looking back of what, what has occurred what has evolved in charles county over the last 20 years from a public safety perspective is 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 phenomenal we have a new radio system, which gives us a lot more capacity. And from a safety perspective, from, from providers in the field, it, it's a much, much better tool. We, we have a brand new center, well, 20 years old now, but we have a center that's more efficient, right? More ergonomic, more, more prepared to deal with the society and, and all the things that we deal with, and the demand and the workload and the, the, the working relationship between the Department of Emergency Services and the volunteer firing EMS providers and, and the sheriff's office. It, it, we have really, really come together um, and to prepare for the next big thing. The, just looking through the town, the town actually improved itself after, instead of, instead of just mulling through, the town did a great job in recovery and building up the town, uh, restructuring some things even better. Uh, the, the town's a beautiful little town. It's a great walking town uh, to live in. It's a great community to live in. Uh, it recovered fully. I would doubt anyone moving here today uh, without somebody telling them the history would know that there was a tornado 20 years ago. Uh, they, they really wouldn't see uh, any results of that. Uh, they would just see a, a, a beautifully structured town. Uh, so, uh, you know, commend the town for uh, its job in the recovery. It was a great job.